viewers. So welcome to this edition of uh, the video blog. So in this uh, video, I'm going to quickly call, uh, show you how to call a C code from Go. So technically speaking, uh, how to call a C library from Go uh, code is what uh, this video is all about. So why do you want to even do that uh, might be the question that you're having right now. The thing is, uh, the languages like C, C++, and several other languages, right, so have been around uh, for a very long time, and there have been like plenty of code written on those. So there can be a situation where you might be wondering whether you can use uh, that library uh, that's written in C uh, in, a, in a Go code. So especially because you don't have a comparable library in Go or that same library functionality cannot be uh, found in, a, in, a, in an existing Go library and so forth. So there can be hundreds of reasons why uh, this might be needed. So in this blog post, we are going to talk about that and how you can achieve this very simply. Uh, using the facilities available in the Go uh, ecosystem. So it also actually gives the language interoperability so so that you can, uh, you know, get uh, the best of both worlds when it comes to Go as well as C. So to demonstrate this, uh, I, we need to have a very simple uh, C library. So that's exactly what uh, I'm uh, trying to demonstrate here. And I have written a blog post on this some time ago, so I'll be uh, posting... Uh, or this uh, link uh, down in the description section later so that you can have a, uh, you know, you can read through the blog uh, later on as well. So to implement a C library, uh, so you see I have a, a folder called calclip. Under that I have a calc underscore color print uh, header file and a respective implementation file. So in the header file I have defined two functions, uh, namely factorial and color print and its names should say what I'm trying to do here, but factorial is to calculate the factorial of the number, and the color print is to print the message uh, in the color format or the color that I'm passing, that I'll be passing on this const char pointer. So it takes two const char pointer parameters. So to see the, the implementation, uh, let's go into the, the C file. So basically the factorial a function is implemented as well as the color print is also implemented here. The factorial doesn't do anything magic here. It's, uh, if you're coming from a you know computer science background, you know uh, by looking at this that uh, it's a recursive function call where the factorial is basically uh, uh, how you calculate factorial is. Now let's say you pass in 5 here, it will be the factorial of that 5 is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Until 1 you just uh, multiply that number uh, from all the numbers in between uh, from that number and number one. So if you're passing in, let's say five, the initial call will be five times and then factorial of one less than that number, factorial of four. So it goes back here and now it's factorial four. So then it will be four times factorial of three. So basically it will, uh, like it will, if you rewind it back, it will be like five times, four times factorial of three. Five times, four times factorial of three will come back here and it will, make sure it will be three times factorial of two and so forth, this will complete. And uh, so that's the implementation. So color print function looks a bit, uh, you know, awkward uh, if you uh, really look at it and what's going on here. Simply, uh, there are a bunch of uh, string comparison uh, if else uh, statements here. And uh, color uh, is taken in and uh, I'm just checking if it's one of these uh, colors that you have passed in. And based on that, I'm using a printf and this weird looking uh, characters uh, have been uh, put in between the, the, the uh, is being passed as a parameter right so and, and then finally we print the message and then we do something called and I have a comment here that says reset. So basically what this uh, value that you have passed in here is what we call as the ANSI color codes. So if you just go down to this blog post, I have a nice link uh, that I have already opened here. So uh, this is a very useful link. Uh, I, I found it uh, very useful. Uh, it talks about all types of ANSI escape sequences and one of the escape sequences is the uh, ANSI colors and graphic modes and especially when it comes to terminals these ASCII color modes uh, can be enabled and then uh, you can reset it back right so basically the escape uh, character is what this is so you just go to the ANSI uh, 
uh, you know, character table and look at the, the value for 33. It's the escape uh, character. And then if you have this, uh, uh, you know, square bracket, uh, and then you have this zero colon, or it can be one colon, like as in here. So if it's zero, uh, it's it will be a normal character. If it's one, it will be a bolded character. And, and then you have a bunch of numbers followed by M. And that number, uh, you know, especially uh, when it comes to here, you, it says like black is 30, uh, as you can hear, red is 31, green is 32, yellow is 33, and it uh, goes so forth. And then when you have this printf uh, sent through, that will enable that color in the terminal. And then finally you print out, it will be printed in that particular color. And then you reset it back. Uh, as you can see, you can reset back. Then it will be, uh, you know, reset back to whatever default uh, it was before you uh, set the ANSI color, right? So simple as that. And now, uh, uh, you know, we need to use this particular functions, uh, which is a C uh, function from Go code. So first of all, I need to make sure, let me clear this. Uh, I need to make sure I go into the calc, lib, uh, calc C lib uh, folder, and which is where I have my uh, C header file and the implementation file. So let me go back here, and I'm, I want to compile my code. I have already done it here, but I'll just uh, go through that once again. You need to have a C compiler. In, in my case, I'm using TCC. So when you do this thing, it will, uh, uh, so we just uh, remove this uh, just to show that uh, we can have this. So now you see you don't have it. Now when I run this, it's going to create my object file first. So object file is created now. It's just a very simple compilation to uh, no less than uh, just very, very fast, right? And then you... Uh, bundle that object file into a archive file and we are using a unique utility called AR uh, to do that and you see uh, it just uh, says below command takes the object files and create a dot a static archive files so sorry for the band pages if you want more details so if you have that now our library is ready so you have the library in this archive file now I want to utilize this in my go code so to do that I'm going back so this is my go code so let's look at what that does and uh, yeah, so let's go through that uh, very quickly. So first thing, uh, you have the main function, uh, you know, that's the entry point in the Go, and you are using the format uh, module, and then asking for a number to calculate the factorial, and then you scan that number into a variable number, and you do the same for a color code, and you uh, scan that into a string, and then you see this, uh, you know, next line called C dot factorial, which looks a bit weird. So that actually comes from this C module. So import C, and uh, and if you can remember, it's actually calling the factorial method of my C uh, function. And then uh, because uh, you know the C function is expecting an integer, a C integer basically, right? I need to make sure. Uh, you know, I pass a C integer. So uh, a Go integer can be converted to a C integer using C dot int method from this C uh, module from Go. And, and that's it. And then it will return back and you are just assigning it to uh, the factorial number. And then I'm creating a, a string from the sprintf from the number. And that message is there with us, right? So now uh, you might have a uh, you know question of how Go code actually knows that there is a factorial uh, function available. So that's actually what this uh, C Go uh, this is actually called the C Go uh, uh, functionality, and uh, the module is called C. So uh, so that visibility is brought in through these comments, and so these comments are special instructions that you provide for the C Go uh, module. And uh, it's just self-explanatory. You have a C flag that says all my, there are include directory uh, being included as a calc C lib. And library directory is also included as C lib because my library is inside the C lib. And then you are saying link the C calc 
color print library and then you are including a, a header file just like see uh, you know uh, just like how you uh, include a C uh, header file something like this right and you have included a standard lib here and you are including this uh, calc C lib uh, calc color uh, print.h as well so because that header file is now available the, the go C go module will know that there is a factorial uh, function available and now you have this message already uh, like whatever message you want to print and I'm, I'm creating that message to pass in for this particular function so I'm going to pass in uh, here and now this is a constar pointer so you can't pass a go string or go message or go go string uh, as in to this c dot color print so we want to convert that to a c string so that basically you can do with c dot c string your color value is a color is a go string here and you are converting it to a c string here similarly this message is converted into a c string called c message uh, but if you're coming from the c uh, programming uh, background you know that uh, um, you know a dynamically allocated uh, const char pointer in c is always allocated in the heap and it's dynamically allocated and you need to free that once you use otherwise you will cause a memory leak so to do that uh, you need to use the free method uh, in, in c you use malloc and free uh, but in go you don't see this malloc and malloc is automatically happening here uh, inside this uh, c string and then it's the programmer's responsibility to make sure that you free it once you finish using it so that's exactly what i'm doing here c dot free and then you are passing a pointer to your c string and that pointer uh, needs to be uh, uh, you know used in this fashion like unsafe dot pointer uh, and this is well documented in the go documentation as well and you defer it later because we haven't used it yet and so this is one specialty of go so once you are done with it and when it goes out of scope uh, it will make sure that this particular function will be called and uh, your memory will be freed back to and and given back to the system and uh, and C color print will go here and it will make sure that this will be printed uh, in your console and apart from that I'm also printing anyway uh, uh, using uh, uh, format.printf in uh, go as well just to show that this functionality you can accomplish uh, within go without calling a C function uh, but this is just a you know uh, you know example right so uh, but there can be certain C libraries that you cannot or do not have the similar functionalities in Go. Uh, that's when this uh, particular functionality will uh, become handy. So let's uh, run this and see. So I have uh, some samples here. So Go, uh, we need to build the Go uh, method, uh, Go, Go, Go uh, code. I have built it now. Now you have it. So let's run it. So it's asking for a number let me put six this time and my color is uh, let's say I don't know whether we had blue there yeah we had blue so let's put it as blue uh, yeah so as you can see it will be printed in blue color and this is always this value that you are printing in cyan uh, color so let's uh, go back and do another round uh, and this time I'm going to say green just to show you now it prints in green. So this is a very simple demonstration of how you can call a C library from Go. And so uh, I recommend you go through this blog post as well. And uh, in fact, uh, you can also do the other way around from a C, C++ code. You can call Go function as well, Go, Go code as well. So we'll look at uh, uh, such an example uh, in another video very soon so thank you for watching this video have a great day